There is a creature that has carved a life for itself in every habitat on earth. That creature is you. That creature is us. Our ingenuity to survive has helped us to adjust ourselves to our surroundings and inhabit even the wildest places on earth. We have never lived as widespread as we do today. But where did it all start? And as equally important, where is it going? According to scientific evidence, modern humans have all derived from one African mother. She was a heavily pregnant woman and the constantly changing environment was forcing her and her tribe to travel to places for better conditions. DNA suggests that the Aboriginal lady from Tasmania, the English student from Britain, or even the uncontacted tribe living in Brazil share all the same ethnical background. To put it poetically, the very same Mother Eve. And today, after 150,000 years of modern human history, our planet has become as ethnically diverse as never before. Estimations suggest that there are around 27,000 ethnicities that speak around 6,000 different languages. The purpose for finding new environments that we would call home was mostly beneficiary. However, it also created psychological and social barriers amongst people that drifted away long enough from one another. And today, one of the most contentious topics that is continuously discussed is otherness. But who exactly is the other? And who is us? And who gets to decide which side we belong to? Well, this topic is strongly related to one of the main key concepts of communication and culture. Power. As we know, power has the ability to influence and consequently control the behavior of people. For example, religion has always been used as an important tool to control societies and how otherness is defined. Many world empires have not hesitated to exploit the use of power and gave societies the impression as if they were the superior race. This helped them to remain the dominant ideology encoders. The Marxist theorist Antonio Gramsci argues that the ruling class can manipulate the value, systems and mores of a society. Amongst some of the famous empires that exploited power were the Romans, the Ottomans and indeed the British Empire. At its peak, the British Empire was the largest empire the world had ever known. It was called the empire where the sun never sets. But in order to achieve this success, you needed men to fight for the empire. Every day, propaganda items would be infused with patriotic and imperial imagery, asking the population to service. The biggest success of the British Empire did not only come from their military power, but also through their devotion to science, literature and technology. The Industrial Revolution in Britain allowed the empire to export products to all over the empire and even started to sell goods to lands they were alien to. And so it became that the British Empire was a highly economically motivated organization that we call capitalism today. Whether it was the merchants or the servicemen, as soon as they were foreign on foreign land, the ethnical difference was playing a key role on their otherness. The British soldiers were the minority in India, so for the Indian people, they were the other. Yet today, from a Western per world perspective, otherness is mostly associated with people who are ethnically the minority of a particular country or region. One important medium plays a key role on how we perceive otherness today. The good old mass media. Mass media has its roots as back as the 15th century and today it is so powerful that it can shape our norms and values as they wish them to be. They have the potential to repeat a biased narrative so often that it may even make it to the history books as the truth. For example, does the name Christopher Columbus ring a bell? Of course it does. He discovered America. Apparently, he also determined that the world was not a flat plate supported by a giant tortoise. Or the story of the British invasion of Hong Kong in China. 
Apparently, the Chinese were damaging British merchant goods and their property, so British Empire decided to invade Hong Kong and save those merchants. But let's take a closer look at these historical events. When Christopher Columbus reached the shores of America, there were indigenous people living there for up to 40,000 years. The Viking explorer Leif Erikson also landed in America 500 years before Christopher Columbus did. But the history books always emphasize Christopher Columbus. The story of the British Empire invading Hong Kong for the safety of their merchants was also propaganda, simply to ensure that the British people did not raise any ethical questions on the legitimacy of the war. The truth was that the Chinese authorities tackled the opium consumption of their citizens and noticed that the British Empire was trading opium imported from India with tea from China. So Britain helped the Chinese authorities to account and took over some of China. Many British historians today argue that there was no respect towards Chinese authorities for banning the drug use which is today illegal in most parts of the world. The other could be right, but if it violated the interest of the powerful, it was wrong. Events such as these were written and communicated from the European perspective and were strongly ethnocentric. According to the Palestinian American scholar Edward Said, Western colonizers have little interest in exploring or understanding otherness. He argues that the dominant ideology aims to hold up a mirror image of the West and reinforce the values and norms of other nations. He argued that otherness must be approached differently and believed that it is a combination that should be celebrated. Up until only a few years ago, mass media extensively exploited the concept of otherness and portrayed otherness as non-white. Every other ethnic group was simply categorized and even stereotyped. But the mass media has lost some of its power to the new emerging medium of global communication, social media. Some argue that social media is dangerous due to privacy and safety. Yet social media has also changed the way various nations and cultures interact with the world and allowed us to look at the concept of otherness impartially. People use social media to learn about their host countries, establish relationships, overcome psychological barriers and ultimately find that sense of belonging. This contributes towards their integration and helps to live in a multicultural community that isn't based on ethnocentrism. The educationalist Matthew Arnold argued that culture and its appreciation could make the world a better place. As social media has integrated itself as a cultural practice, it can be argued that we should also study its positive effects on society. This social revolution impartially looks at otherness as a concept that should be looked into but at no stage considered inferior. Even becoming friends on networking sites allows both parties to observe the cultural practices of each other's everyday life. Prior to this global community, many perceived otherness as a collective hegemonic mentality. However, with the recent developments of social networking, encountering the other with a neutral approach became more of a communal practice. While traditional mass media predominantly attempts to set the agenda in their interest, social media links people regardless of differences and geographical boundaries. Guoming Cheng, who is a professor of communication studies at the University of Rhode Island, states, only through glo global communicative competence can people from different cultures communicate effectively and productively in the globalizing society. The theory of communicative competence was coined by Del Himes that can be also be applied to social media. If the other has a comprehensive understanding of social media, he or she will increase its competence of communication. Thanks to science, 
humans have invented tools that make our lives much easier. But we have also discovered how small our planet is and how much we are interdependent to one another. The vastness of the universe demonstrates how senseless it is to consider a certain race as superior and otherness as inferior.